Jeremy Chara with CBT Nuggets taking your Amazon Web Services requests. This morning we have a question from John saying, quote, what is an AMI? Great question, John. Well, AMI actually stands for Amazon Machine Image, but I've got to start with a bigger picture than that. Amazon Web Services is a service that allows you to run your own virtual servers from Amazon data centers, which a lot of people call the cloud. To do so, you pay them on an hourly basis, a pretty reasonable rate, to run these servers in their infrastructure. Now, these servers can do whatever it is you want them to do. They could be uh, web servers, they could be email servers, they could be online gaming servers, they could be video stream, whatever. I mean, that's, that's your business. It's whatever you want to run those servers uh, to be. But Amazon encourages you to de design those in an elastic format. Now, what's that mean? Elasticity means that you can grow those servers or delete those servers turn those servers off on the fly as your demand increases. That optimizes your cost. So as you get more clients, as you get more demand for whatever services you're actually running from there, you can replicate that machine again and again and again. And now it can distribute the load amongst all those machines. And as the demand goes down, maybe it's midnight and nobody's using your services, you can actually terminate a whole bunch of those machines and throw them away uh, so that you save a ton of money because you're not paying for those servers to run all the time. Now we come to what is an AMI. An AMI is is your perfect server on ice. So essentially, you can create this perfect image, install all the right patches, put all the right software on there, put all the right support files, essentially create the perfect image of that, uh, and then save it, store it as an Amazon machine image. Now, once you have this Amazon machine image, you have a frozen hard drive that you can take and you can use to generate all these additional servers. That's that whole definition of elasticity that Amazon is after. Now, typically between this phase of a frozen machine and this phase of all these running servers will be something that we call bootstrapping, which I'll just write in as BTS. Bootstrapping is just a fancy word to say we script this AMI. So as it boots up, it becomes a little bit more unique because if you've been in computing for a while, you know that you can't just create these mirrors because you'll start getting conflicts like, wait a sec, you can't have the same name as me, or wait a sec, you can't have the same IP address, or you know, pose as the same identity. So you might have to make some unique things, and that's what bootstrapping is for. Or perhaps you put a machine on ice, and that was last year, so you create some bootstrapping to update some key components or apply some key updates so you don't have to recreate that whole image. Uh, you can have it script itself to, to kind of build itself on the fly. Now, I know some might have the question, well, can you just bootstrap the whole thing? I mean, why create an AMI? Why not just have this like base nothingness and kind of script everything together? Well, absolutely you can, but the problem with bootstrapping everything is that you end up not only taking a huge amount of time figuring it out, because I will tell you, this is a time suck. Uh, <laughs> you're sitting there trying to figure out things, and I will say it makes you feel really accomplished when it's all said and done, but it just costs you a lot of time. And here's the big problem. If you bootstrap everything, it takes four forever to build these instances. The best thing to do is to create an AMI that has most of what you want and then bootstrap the unique stuff because this gets you an instance running quickly. This tweaks the unique stuff on the fly so that you can actually add these things when the demand is there. You don't want your machines taking an hour to build when your customers are demanding more services right now. So now let's get into what it looks like to create one in Amazon Web Services. I actually just created a new uh, instance that I used for actually another micro nugget that showed how to build your first EC2 server, uh, and it's actually running right here. Now, if I wanted to take this server and create an AMI of it, I'm telling you, it's a piece of cake. All you got to do is right click on it and hit create image, which is EBS AMI. Now, I will tell you there's a lot of considerations if you get into the type of operating system that you're running. You don't want to, you know, for instance, create an AMI of a lot of Linux instances while they're running because you might have open files that get corrupted, you want to shut it down. You know, there's there's a lot of best practices, but this is essentially how you create it. So I can go in and say, uh, this is my, and you, you, you know, your own naming convention is what you'll put. I'll say, uh, as of August 27th, uh, or 27th, you know, I've got my uh, perfect image. You know, that's 
uh, put the name without spaces just in case it's going to uh, balk it up. So then I hit create, and what it's going to do is actually take this request and store it in Amazon S3, which is super redundant storage, super reliable. So now, in the future, all I have to do is come over to my AMIs, and I should see uh, this one being generated right now. And I can say, well, I want to you know, spin up a brand new server. Let's you know, I've got my test one here, whatever that is. Hit launch, and it's going to actually take those frozen hard drives on ice and then walk you through the typical create instance wizard of EC2. Now this discussion could springboard into a whole bunch of other stuff, primarily dealing with this right here, which is the bootstrapping. You could get into EC2 config, which is a utility for Windows that allows you to kind of prep one of your servers before you image it so it naturally reboots and configures itself. You can get into all the scripting tools that you can use with uh, Linux that, that allows you to automate. Uh, I mean, again, the sky is the limit, but for now, John, you probably already got more than what you asked for, which is What's an AMI? That's what it is. That's the vision of how you can use it. If you do have any kind of request, please type it in in the little comments field below because I'm always curious what other uh, topics people are interested in with Amazon Web Services. And as always, if you want a ton of information, come over to cbtnuggets.com. We have multiple series on Amazon Web Services for you to check out. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.